With Metro by T-Mobile, your hard-earned money goes further. This tax season, there's zero fees to switch. Enjoy Metro's lowest price. Just 25 bucks a line for four lines. Plus, get four free Samsung Galaxy phones when you switch. Now that's the best deal in wireless. Metro by T-Mobile, empowering you to rule your day. All lines lose promo rate if any deactivates. No fees on select phones. Limit one per line with eligible port. Exclude sales tax. Limited time offer. Additional terms apply. See Metro by T-Mobile.com. Two, one. Welcome to the game. I'm Russ Cohen. We've got Nico Riesgo. Nico, how are you? Russ Cohen, my man. And Mike Ojello. Mike, how are you? One day closer to opening day. Yeah, opening day will be interesting this year. My buddy has has tickets, but of course, right now with the levels that are only being allowed in New York, um, we're on a list. The tickets are bought, and if they open it up a little bit more beyond just like, I don't know, 1,000 or 2,000 season ticket holders, then we're in. So we'll see. My streak may continue. It may not, but it's out of my control. Yeah, it's 10%, I believe, but they there's some speculation it might be as high as 15 to 20% by opening day. All I know is that opening day is my birthday, so I'm hoping that even though I'm not going to be able to go to Yankee Stadium, I can go into a restaurant and enjoy some wings while watching the Yankees beat the crap out of whoever they're playing. Yeah, I mean, the Anchor Bar will be open, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Their wings are murder. <laughs> and uh, so let's talk about... Um, I'm going to start off with the New York Mets. Um, I wasn't, Nico, I wasn't all impressed when they got Khalil Lee. I think he's okay. Uh, I didn't like losing Steven Matz. I I think Lee, just because he's ranked eighth in the KC system, doesn't let me feel like he's a great prospect. I think he's just okay. So I don't know how good he's going to be. We'll all wait and see on that one. Albert Amora Jr., cheap signing a lot of these signings that the Mets did after they lost out on Springer and after they lost out on Bauer uh Tejon Walker a lot of these were just all sort of like cheap fill in the gap kind of signings so really the only big thing they did was the Lindor Carrasco and then after after that it's been a lot of fill in that's right. I'm very disappointed. I mean, when you're looking at the Mets and we were really excited about the new ownership and splurging and, you know, you've got a billion dollar, um, you know, hedge fund and um, the Cy Young, uh, you know, player is a free agent, you know, the top pitcher out there. And so everyone was excited about the opportunity of getting Bauer and uh, and, and, and having a real chance of winning a world title. And I think, you um, for Mets fans, I think um, they're pretty sad, and I think they're going into spring training. Those hopes are dashed, and uh, they're just hoping on maybe if we can get 500, we'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, Mike, uh, you know, Kevin Pillar added as well. You know, yeah. the Mets have plenty of depth, but a lot of their depth is sort of like C-grade talent. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Nico. It was, it was sort of disappointing, and you know, in talking to you, this is sort of reflective of Sandy Alderson and his sort of like, uh, you know, if we can get uh, buy one get one free at uh, yeah. Sonic or something. That's that's yeah. that's his mentality. I mean, honestly, Albert Amora is is a defensive replacement. Kevin Pillar has not had a good offensive, a good complete offensive year since 2015. So they went bargain basement hunting. And I, I, I get that, okay, you got to plug a hole after you didn't get Springer. But there were other free agents. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't go after Jackie Bradley Jr. Yeah. And he's still out there. So obviously he, he didn't get the offers that he thought he was going to get. But they got money to burn. Why aren't you going out, you know, instead of wasting it on Taewon Walker, who is an average pitcher? They want your, payroll flexibility in the future, Mike. That's the line. Well, and okay, maybe that pays off closer to the trade deadline with with teams that are budget constrained and going into the last year of a C, of the CBA. Maybe they think that they can, you know, add two or three players. At the at the July 31st deadline and make a make a run for it, but I, I think that you know they have a real big challenge in that in that NL East with oh, yeah. Philadelphia and Washington and Atlanta. I mean, there's no guarantee the Mets finish in the playoffs. 
no, there's definitely not a guarantee. And <clears throat> I can make an argument that any one of those teams you just mentioned, we might even be able to mention the Marlins, could win the division. Whether yeah. one of them is lucky enough to uh, to still make the playoffs beyond that, I'm not sure. I mean, the Phillies, you know, they got Ray Multo back, and they've done some other things, nothing huge. I, I do like the, uh, the last-minute um, signing of Drew Smiley for Atlanta, um, Nico. He had about 40 strikeouts in 20-something innings last year. They threw a quick 11 mil at him. And to be honest, that 11 mil could pay off. Like, he could possibly win 10, 12 games for them. Yeah, and the Braves just getting better and better. And you see the Braves were just, what, one or two games away from beating the Dodgers. So they're right there, and they even got better this year. I'm surprised the Giants let Smiley go. I mean, he is the big steal of the deal. Mike, what's your feeling? Well, I, I, it, the question with the with uh, the Braves is whether Smiley is going to be in the bullpen or going to be. I mean, if he's in the bullpen and he's making 11 million bucks, then it's not a great signing. I mean, they 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 have you know Wright and Soroka is coming off an injury. I mean, I think it was a smart depth signing, but I don't know how much of a difference maker he's going to be. If if Soroka doesn't come back, or if he doesn't come back until you know May or June, if they're careful with him coming off coming off an injury, then you know then the insurance was right. But I mean, I, the thing is, is that the Braves with Acuna and all and the and Freeman and all the offense that they have, if they just get good pitching, they're going to be a juggernaut. I, I love <clears throat> spring training stories, guys, when we're like a couple of days in. I'll give you an example of stories that come out. Scott Kingery is returning to his roots. Yeah, so he's going to, you know, they'll switch him around position-wise, and there won't be as much pressure on him. We'll see. Uh, also, I see with Reese Hoskins, he's almost completely healthy. You know, it says close to if not completely healthy. You know, these are the kinds of articles, Nico, that, that sort of make me laugh. Because everybody wants to be positive early in spring. And so, like, even, even like, the possible bad news gets turned into good news. And, and I, by the way, we didn't mention um, Tim Tebow's retiring, if you have something to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to say goodbye, Tim. Goodbye. Um, it was a nice, a nice try. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely commend your efforts. And um, uh, you, you definitely brought a lot of, uh, to the game you as far say. as uh, basically showing how hard it is and how difficult it is uh, for other athletes, whether it be a football player, a basketball player, someone like Michael Jordan, one of the greatest yeah. athletes in the yeah, world. He's nice. You can't even nice play baseball. People. The greatest was, can't even play this game. Yeah, he was nice to people. He took pictures with people I know and was very cordial last year at spring training. So he's a good guy. He just you know, doesn't have the talent, like you said. I mean, that's a big deal. But, you know, what what would we say about, you know, Nico Riesgo early in spring training when you were trying to catch on with the team? What would the uh, the positive story be there? The positive story would be you're healthy, um, you're young, you're full of energy. Uh, you can run like the wind and, you, and you've got the power to hit the ball out of the stadium and you, and you can play decent defense at uh, several different positions. OK. And that is, you know, the, those are the kinds of things that um, we hear about. Now, Mike, give us the tale. Uh, it's still being talked about. I see John Morosi tweeted about it the other day, and I'm glad he's tweeting about baseball and not hockey, to be honest. Um, tell me about the Toronto Blue Jays and no. where they might play this year. Well, first of all, let me just say, uh, you know, Tim Tebow, th- thanks for thanks for showing up and use the line from Major League. Jesus can't hit a curveball. Um, <laughs> now, the Blue Jays, okay, right now the whole situation is in limbo because of the Ontario government. They did not allow the Toronto Raptors to play. <clears throat> they would have allowed them to play in Scotiabank Arena in Toronto if every team was in Canada. But since they're playing U.S. teams and they were crossing the border, that was not going to fly. And that's the same deal with the Blue Jays. They could play at Rogers Center. The problem is they're playing all all American teams, and they have to cross the border, and that's right now with the border being closed. That's a no-no. So right now, and I think mostly because the weather in Florida early in the season will be better than it is in Buffalo, Mm -hmm. they're going to play at their spring training facility in Dunedin. But 
it's an open question whether they come back to Buffalo. They spent the money to upgrade the lighting and everything else, so everything is in place. They could real, they could come back and play games in Buffalo if the Ontario provincial government will not allow teams to travel in. So the, right now Buffalo's in limbo, but it seems like a definite possibility because I don't know, at least for a couple months, I don't know whether the Canadian government will start letting people in until probably June or July. So you could see a three-tiered situation with the Blue Jays where they're going to be playing out, playing in Dunedin and Buffalo until the, until the summer. Wow. Yeah, that, that would be kind of crazy. And, and Nico... What do we think about the Fernando Tatis Jr. Oh, signing 14-360? That 14 for the one year was like half of what his dad made in his entire career, I think. So, and his dad was a pretty good player. Uh, so what? Uh, what's your feeling? I, I don't think it's terrible, but I think they're paying for future success, which at the shortstop position, is he really going to be at the shortstop position for all those years? I'm going to say no. So at some point, he'll probably move somewhere else because we don't have that many old middle infielders in this league anymore. And that's why I worry about the Mets signing Lindor long term, because it's hard to play shortstop until you're 35 these days. That's true. And and the way he plays the game, he plays it so aggressive and he plays it with so much energy. Uh, You know, you, you never know about the injuries. And that's the kind of scary thing about it. But when you look at the numbers of the contract, he's a $300 million man. He's up there with Mookie Betts and some of the greatest ball players in the, in the, in the world. And, uh, and he got his money early. And like I said, he's one of the players and I would wish uh, more and more players start getting their, their money early uh, and getting these contracts. Cause you know, these owners are, you know, they lost so much money last year. And a lot of these teams, the main thing is uh, they were afraid to play 162 games because they thought maybe they, they're worried about the fans. They're worried about losing money. But then here you go. The money's there. And you got the players getting the, uh, the big contracts. Why? Because they got the MLB.tv app. They're going to unload. And mm-hmm. then they're going to release gaming where uh, fans can uh, pick six and pick, their, pick the winners. And uh, this game is really about to generate some digital revenues. Uh, that the game's never seen before. Yeah, no question that's going to come in uh, into play. Mike, where do you picture yourself in 14 years? I hope I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, you know, and then Pete Rose is going to love the MLB app. Uh, but oh wow! Now, you know, the, under a different name though, right, Mike? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, client number nine. I, I I love I love Tatis. He's a fantastic player. I just I really bristle at these long term deals. I mean, he's 22 or 23, so you're talking about going to age 36 or 37. You want to see what a 36 or 37 year old how they drop off? Look at look at what Albert Pujols is now, and you know he's he was a phenomenal player. He's probably Which, a by Hall the way, fan. since you said that, yeah. his wife basically said he's retiring after the season, but he didn't say it. Right. I mean, well, his contract <laughs> his contract is up. You know, me, well. If he doesn't agree, I'm sure half of that contract is going to go to her. Um, but 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 I understand where the Padres are. They're saying well, we're going to we're going to bet on this kid. He's got you know I, I've seen him in interviews. He's really level headed. He seems really dedicated to the game. He's a real talent. Um, yeah, and the Padres are an organization that seems to be measuring themselves against the Dodgers. I mean, they went out and they traded for Darvish, and they went out and they traded for Snell, and they and, and they signed Machado, and now that now they've locked up Tetis. They're they're intent on competing against the Dodgers, and and they seem to be throwing the money around just like the Dodgers are. The question is, is down the road. I mean, remember, 28 plus million AAV for Fernando Tatis Jr. is the same amount the Yankees are paying for John Carlos Stanton. How did that contract? turn out right now so yeah right now it looks great because he's healthy and he's great and he's and he's one of the best young players in the game five or six years down the road they may be regretting that deal yeah no question mike uh nico sit this one out for 10 seconds but mike i've just seen that um the mlb network's thinking about giving craig carton an hour-long show in the morning forget forgive me for saying this but He's never had a good baseball take in his life. Is it a well, gambling? Is it a gambling show? It does not say that. Well, I mean, that would be his area of expertise, apparently. But I mean, that's, I mean, they're they are cramming, they they, they are uh, 
they're looking for. I mean, honestly, I'd rather give Chris Russo an extra a couple hours on the MLB Me network. Me too. At least, I, I at think least that's he knows what he's idea. talking about. At least yeah. he, uh, Craig Carton gives me nothing. I've heard him for years. Uh, I mean, if that's the dynamic you want to go, bring back Francesa. At least his, his takes are hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I agree with you. Um, so, Nico, uh, it looks like there was just 13 positive tests recently between you know MLB and MLBPA players, but that's because they weren't really in spring training with each other. Uh, do you think it's going to be as bad as last year where the Marlins were out for two weeks, at least in the early going, until we get more vaccinations and continue to crunch the numbers? Because let's face it, Florida's a hot mess with the vaccine, and their numbers are still high. That's the danger. Uh, when you look at the, what are the unforeseen challenges uh, ahead for the game, um, it's exactly uh, the situation. We're in COVID and it's unforeseen. And I do anticipate there is going to be some shutdowns and um, we may even get the DH uh, because of it. Well, I, I mean, just for the listeners out there, uh, there is a woman who um, 105 and she beat COVID. She credits gin soaked raisins. I will go out and buy gin soaked raisins now if I feel like it's going to help me, Mike. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. This is a, this is a scam. She's just a hundred and five year old drunk. Oh, stop! <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, okay. Hey, if it if it works for her, that's great. But I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not good. Uh, Sunmade is going to have a nice run on their on their product probably in the next couple of weeks because everybody's looking for their own little cure. Sunmade and the moonshiners out there. All right. So, <laughs> um. Interesting thing, Nico. So, you know how picking numbers is always interesting. I don't know how it worked out for you when you were a player. Maybe when you went to Montreal, did you have a number and then all of a sudden you realized, uh uh-oh, that's like Tim Wallach's number or something? Um, How did that work out with you? You know, you get to the big leagues and they hand you a number. And um, and you're blessed to be there. Um, So, uh, so, you know, unless you're obviously one of these superstar players – like a judge or something like that and says, Hey, I want 99. I don't think the Yankees handed them 99. (laughs) So uh, some of these young kids, they have in mind what number they want. Um, I've always wanted the number, number three. I got a chance to wear number three on my MVP season there with the Mets in St. Lucie. Mm -hmm. And I had one of my best years ever. It's just something magical when you wear that number and uh, you feel special attached to it and you just kind of even play even extra harder. Because it's Babe Ruth's number. Yeah. So, but oddly enough, Nico, you talked about number 99. And the reason Taiwan Walker chose 99 is because Mr. Met wears 00. zero or otherwise, I think he was going to choose that. That's He, he knows where um, the Mets' uh, loyalties lie. And do you think if Taiwan Walker would have asked Mr. Met to change his number that he would have? Absolutely. I think he would have. I think they would have sold a lot of jerseys, too. I think Taiwan Walker, I mean, he, he's got some phenomenal talent. I mean, if the Mets, like I said, being around a Cy Young winner like Jacob DeBron, uh, that may spark him a little bit. And I think I think the Mets expect him to win at least 10 games. They need somebody to step up. No, they definitely need 10 games out of him. Mike, what do you think about that? Do you think Mr. Met would have offered up his jersey had Walker asked for it? Or was Walker doing the right thing by realizing all right, I can't take Mr. Met's number, so let me take 99. I think Mr. Met would have gone on a gritty, like, killing spree if he, if they had, if Taiwan Walker had tried to force him to, to take, uh, to, to take his number. I, you know, I mean, if Taiwan Walker wants to be the second best 99 in New York, be my guest, because that's what he, that's what he's going to be. I mean, I think he's a decent. Oh, wait, wait. Does this go back to wearing 42, where, you know, Butch Husky probably wore it first and, you know, but Mariano wore it better. Is, is this where we're going with this show? No, they just, I mean, they, they just wore 42 at the same time. And I think Husky was the second last and Mariano was the last and Mariano was the right. best. So there you go. All right. Um, Nico, <laughs> it's interesting you brought up um, something about the Mets there. I can't remember exactly the moment, but Jacob DeGrom had said recently, because uh, he's only got two years on this deal, that he uh, would really like to finish his career out as a Met. He uh, feels a loyalty to the organization, but he also thinks it's cool to stay with one team. I think Met fans do feel that way. He is their best homegrown pitcher in many, many years, probably since Doc Gooden. 
you know, a couple Cy Youngs later. Stephen Cohen can make this happen if he wants to. I think he should. What do you think? Absolutely he should, and, and fast, too. I mean, if you want to build uh, a championship uh, dynasty, I mean, and if you want to compete with the Dodgers, you've got to start uh, showing some loyalties to these players, and you want to have uh, a, a team environment where it's infectious in there, where these free agents want to just go, and, and they just can't wait to play with the Mets and sign with the Mets. Uh, because the Mets are going to show some loyalties uh, to some of the great players. If you play great, you're going to be rewarded. Well, maybe, Mike, because, you know, Michael Conforto has been out saying he'd like to re-sign with the Mets, and there's currently no negotiations. Uh, does he really have to prove it again to Sandy Alderson? Is this where we're at? Well, I, th- I think what's at play here is that they're basically saying, OK, Conforto, show us a little bit more and we'll give you the deal. But maybe they're maybe they're skeptical. I mean, he's had some injury issues over the last few years, but I think he's their I think he's their second best hitter. Yes. And and he's and, and he's a left a lefty and a, and a pretty decent outfielder. So, I, I mean, if if I were to lock somebody up, I would prefer to lock him up over Francisco Lindor, who you just traded for, instead of you know a, a guy who's been in your organization for years. But it's all a question of the valuation of what of what they think of Conforto and what they think of Lindor, because I, I, I mean I can't imagine that it's going to be one or the other that they're going to pay. But the way that they're acting right now, it seems like that. Right, it does seem like that. So, Mike, what do you feel? Uh, where do you feel the Yankees are at? They did a few things, nothing major. Mm-hmm. Are, are they going to be a big player uh, this year, or are you worried that they're going to slip a little? I mean, right now the AL East is, you know, it's them and everybody else. I mean, the Blue Jays have hitters, but they have no pitching staff. They're really, you know, they have a couple decent pitchers, but not enough. A lot of players would have to. Uh, you know that Robbie Ray would all, have to, all of a sudden have to be you know, Steve Carlton for them to to compete for the with the Yankees and the AL East. I mean, I'm not underestimating Tampa and Tampa. The, the one thing that you have to be a little bit scared of with Tampa is they are great at reclamation projects right. and them going out and getting you know. The, Getting Chris Archer from you know after Pittsburgh dumps him after Tampa Bay robbed him and got Glasnow and Meadows and now they get Chris Archer back. You watch Chris Chris Archer will win 15 games. Uh, they uh, they brought in Waka and they brought in um, Rich Hill. You know mm-hmm. these are all reclamation projects. If they get something out of those guys, they could compete with the Yankees. But the only thing the only thing I think the Yankees have to really worry about like every year is the durability of their rotation and the durability of their big slugging outfielders uh apparently stanton and judge and i've heard this many a time with injured players well they've gone out and they're they're trying a new uh workout regimen you know uh, judges into yoga this year instead of power lifting and like okay fine if if he breaks his leg in the second week of the season everybody's gonna say what the hell difference did it make but you know they're they're hoping that that their their workout regimen change will work and that judge will have a, a a good year you know he's missed 60 plus games a couple years in a row and they really need him in the lineup all the time and stanton looked good uh in the playoffs they need that stanton as opposed to the guy who keeps pulling quad muscles but really it's going to come down to that pitching staff the the you know cole's great but Tayon and Kluber as your 2-3 is really a roll of the dice, and they're holding their breath until July, until they get Severino back, and even that's not a guarantee. So um, I, they, they plugged some holes. They, they re-signed Brett Gardner, which I think everybody knew they were going to do. I think they're going to win the division, but the, it's not whether they win the division. It's whether they win the World Series. That's the mark for the Yankees every single year. So, Mike, uh, Gary Cole has made it into the news a few times yep. this offseason, once for uh... – you know, cheating to grip the ball mm-hmm. and and once for service time manipulation, because now he went yes. on a rant about that because a former Mariners executive went on a video rant about that. This isn't going to go well with this league player negotiations for this uh, next season for the yeah. CBA, is it? Enjoy, enjoy baseball this year. Because you may not see it for a, a long time next year. Yes, the 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 lines have been drawn, and Cole. I mean, first of all, uh, Mather, the uh, the the the, the yeah. uh, an executive with the Mariners who resigned, is an idiot. 
to go out and say to go out and say publicly what everybody knows, but to say yeah. it publicly is just stupidity. I mean, everybody knows that the, there's a manipulation of of the whole uh, uh, service time situation. You saw it with Vladimir Guerrero. You yep. saw it with Chris Bryant. You see it with every good prospect. And and he was talking about Jared Kalanick and yep. how you know he's not going to you know no matter what he's not going to make the team. They'll wait until, until the April, end of April. That's when he's right make exactly. It. So to get that extra year and and he even explained well we offered him a seven year deal and he didn't want it so we're going to get or six year deal so we're going to get our extra year out of it. Right. Major league teams have to operate this way because they know that these guys are going to hit the hit the jackpot after their service time. So I mean I don't blame them for it. They're using the system, but. Hey, the players got raked over the coals in the last CBA, and they're bound and determined not to get raked this time. But honestly, I don't. I think they're just going to have a staring contest until like July of next year, and then the players will crumble, crumble like they normally do. I mean, Nico Kalenic's um, a great young player. Of course, the Mets traded him away, so now he'll be a, a future Hall of Fame center fielder for Seattle. But uh, that's you know beside the point because uh, Robbie Cano will be sitting at home this year. Anyhow, not a great trade, but the big thing about this is <laughs> the big thing about this is with um, in regard to Kalenic, he did turn down a deal, but it was a low low ball offer, and he's willing to bet on himself. A, would you do the same thing if you were a player? And B, you know what what do you think the odds are that there is going to be baseball on time next year? I think it's. 20 percent. I don't think there's much, uh, you know, in favor of that happening at all. I think it's zero percent. Zero. You go with zero. Yeah, we're going to be in for a long stoppage. We may even lose a whole season. It's going to get ugly. And uh, Mike's right. We got to enjoy this year. This is going to be the year because it's going to be a dogfight after the year, uh, after the season's over with. I mean, you did cross the picket line. We wrote about it in our book, Strike Three. Would that happen again? Would owners actually try and do that again, or are there just not enough players? Because I think after the uh, the rooting out of the minor leagues, a lot of these players are going to go and get jobs and such. Would they actually come back and try and cross a picket line if it came to that? No, no. And one of the reasons why we wrote the book, uh, Russ, is to, so there'll never, ever be a strike ever again in, in, in Major League Baseball. And I don't think there there will be. I mean, there was three major strikes, strike three. The players are out on the striking. There's... There's so much money opportunities. It's just time to negotiate and have some really good uh, professional negotiations in there. I know um, uh, Clark, Tony Clark, is a former yeah. player, and he's advocating um, a lot on the player's behalf, but it's just not enough. I mean, even even what he's asking for, the players need much, much more uh, protection, uh, much more opportunities uh, from the major leagues, and then all the way down to the lower levels of uh, those minor leaguers uh, need protection as well. At, well, for at, the ones, different the levels ones that are as well. Now, do you feel With like some guarantees? Yeah, guarantees for minor leaguers. Yeah, I think um, you're dreaming there. I know they're giving some for this year because it's a weird year. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like um, you're already saying that you feel like there will be a strike? So do you feel like uh, Clark has a big enough war chest to last a year for all the constituents? Because people forget, like you know, someone like Rice. I don't Harper think it'll home. be a strike. I don't think it'll be a strike. Tony Clark, like I said, there's not going to be another player well, strike. I don't they, think you Tony said that Clark they is, might miss the no, season. What there's going to be a that? work stoppage through the owners. The owners are probably lockout. not. There's just not going to be oh, an so agreement. It's so lockout. it's going to be a stoppage. But it's a semantics. A lockout, a strike, it's the same thing. Right. Uh, no, no, because a strike is the players are walking away from billions of dollars of opportunity uh, when they could be negotiating. Um, and then a work stoppage is the players really want to play and the owners are preventing them the opportunity. OK, but you know how this is going to get played. It's going to get played that. One side's going to blame the other. The other one's going to blame the other. The fans going to have nothing but holding their head in their hand. I, I think it's just semantics, Mike. I mean, yeah. I mean, the owners are basically going to say to the players if they, you know, if you don't agree to some semblance of what we're offering, well, Geico's hiring. Because, I mean, really, I mean, where, where are you going to go? You, there is no rival league. You can't go to the Mexican league or you can't go to the Dominican or whatever. You, you can go to Japan or Korea and make one-tenth of what you make. I mean, I mean, right now, 
I think some things have to change. I, I don't like the the way uh, you know you've got teams that are sort of feeder teams like the like the Pirates and the and the Royals who can spend twenty million dollars for their entire roster, where one player uh, like Tatis is making more than. Yeah. The entire team. There's, I think, there's got to be some sort of cap. Of course, the players will never agree to it, but they don't realize that it's probably to their benefit because if there's a cap ceiling, there's a cap floor. Even if it's a, even if it's a soft cap where you allow the big market teams like the Yankees and the Dodgers to to spend over the cap with a luxury tax. But you, you have to have some sort of structure here, and I think that I think the players, you know, they they get pissed off at the at the system and the way. Uh, it's structured. They agreed to it. So they have to, you know, so they shouldn't, you know, guys like Cole shouldn't complain about the service time. They, It's part of the CBA. The uh, the agreement that, you know, the, the whole thing is, well, get a better one this time. And that's why I think they're going to push against the owners. The owners are going to push back and we're not going to see baseball until next summer. And I do think there's possibility. And Nico actually did play in the Mexican League, Mike, and we're not mm-hmm. going to give away the whole book, but Nico, that wasn't the greatest experience of your life, for sure. No, I actually ended up in a Mexican prison, oh. um, and I actually get, I was unpaid. They tried to release me without giving me my final check, talking about my check is going to be in the mail. I'm supposed to, supposed to wait in the United States for my check from Mexico, and <laughs> uh, that, didn't, uh, that didn't sit well with me. Did you get it in Bitcoin or, or in pesos? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I ended up in a prison. I got a little upset. I kind of turned a few desks and chairs and made a big ruckus in the office. Uh, they called the police and locked me up. And it was just a big uh, television event, I think, because they brought the news cameras. And uh, it was Doesn't quite shocking good. being in one of those jails. Let, I mean, let that be a lesson to anybody out there. The it, was, it, was, it was criminal. So there you go. That's what a Mexican league was like back in the day, Mike. Oh boy. It sounds, hey, it sounds it sounds like the KHL or us. Oh. All right. And on that note, we're gonna leave it right there. We appreciate everybody listening to the game, and we'll catch everybody next time. My man. So we're sitting here with my friend, Bruce Springsteen. We just grew to trust each other. I felt really at home around you. Renegades, Born in the USA, a new Spotify original podcast from Higher Ground. Listen free only on Spotify. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope, it's Geico. Uh, Yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, giveth thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.